When you turn the ball over five times, four interceptions, one for a touchdown, three others in field position to set up touchdowns, you ain't going to beat anybody. It's my team. It's my quarterback. I'm very disappointed with my behavior. But he don't. You're listening to the Between the Whistles podcast, brought to you by CanadaFootballChat.com. Um, as always, this is Coach Mac, and I'm here with today just Coach Josh. What's going on? Coach Bobby is, uh, well, I think he's enjoying an extra long weekend to add on to his long Easter weekend. Is yeah, that so, safe to say? Something like that. I mean, I think it's all just excuses. But yeah, whatever. yeah. He's he's a uh, he's paid by the government, so <laughs> let's just let's just leave it at that. Yeah. So. Um, controversy. Woo! Josh is hard at work. We just decided randomly to create a little controversy tonight. We decided we wanted to talk about something that uh, that we as coaches talk about a lot, uh, either uh, jokingly or quite seriously. But uh, it is, you know, it can be considered a hot button topic, yeah. and in uh, a lot of cases, it's definitely a, a divisive one. Sure. Um, and so, even tonight, we've uh, we've put a poll out there to people. Uh, both uh, in our own special sort of interest groups and in our own private chats and um, on the Between the Whistles Facebook page uh, and Twitter just to kind of see what people think about this. So let me explain the scenario, Josh, and then you as the research department can give me a rough idea of how the responses have been so far. Yep. And then we can break it down. Yep. So option A, so you're a team that's, we'll call you a tweener team. You're kind of in the middle of the pack. Uh, you play in you know uh, a, a region or a city where there's uh, you know they split things up into divisions yeah. so you're a middle of the pack team and you're on the cusp so when things get broken up you have the option uh, i mean you don't always have the option but we're we're going to um, hypothetically say you have the option yeah. of either option 1 playing up into division 1 or the higher division where you would be at the bottom and you would likely get your butt whooped. Mm. Um, however, you'd be in the top tier and you'd be playing the top teams. Yeah. Or option two, playing down, where you're going to be one of the better teams in a tier two or a lower tier. Um, and you'll be, I don't know if you'll be dominant per se, but you'll definitely be in every game and probably winning a lot of them. Yeah. So um, first of all, let's give our own opinions. Josh, what do you think? Okay, well, first, just to kind of add on to what you're saying, I think it's important to recognize that we're talking like it's just like a straight up, straight up tier one, tier two. It's not like a triple A, double A situation, just so that we don't muddy the numbers. And for me, I'm all about playing down. And the reason for that is, and we'll get into it more later, is I feel I coach at a team that we have a hard time getting numbers. And if we're playing tier one and we're just getting our butt whooped all the time and we're not winning football games... I can't keep my numbers up and I'm not going to get any sleep because I'm going to be trying to recruit all the time. And it's difficult for us. So that's where I'm coming from on this. I'll elaborate more later on so we can keep people interested. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm hard at work here looking at the numbers right now. So if so, when you say keeping numbers up, you're talking about attendance and, and kids dropping out. Yeah, like honestly, like we're in the age of LeBron James like or, the, you know, the major athletes moving on to schools that win. And if you're not winning and you can just – jump over the borderline and play for a different school, it's kids are going to do it. So if I can entice them to stay by winning some football games, you know, my numbers are going to stay in a nice, comfortable spot for us. But if we're losing all the time, we get into a situation where I don't, we don't have the numbers, your studs get hurt, now you don't have backups, now you have to forfeit games. We've never had to forfeit games, but it's been close in some occasions. And, you know, like a lot of football is a tough sport where you got to put a lot of work in. And is it worth it when there's 24 kids on your team and you, you know you're going across the harbor to get thumped 60 to nothing? And then you got to go down the road to the other school and get thumped 70 the next week? Not a lot of kids want to do that. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we kind of see a lot of kids being tested for character when that happens, too. Yeah, I mean, you sure. get a lot of quit. Um, you, you you sort of establish who the kids are that are going to quit on you at that point yep. in the season too, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that's an issue too with kids, you know, either getting hurt because they're getting beat up 
by physically dominant teams and fresh legs yeah. when they're exhausted and have we have a shorter bench and they also um, or you know getting just beat up because they're out there playing two ways because the only players we have. And I think it's important to remember that just because you play at a school that's in tier one or tier two, it's not going to change your a bit your the way you're going to get recruited. If you're a stud, you're a stud. I don't care where you're playing. Um, you just need to maybe highlight some different stuff if you're at a tier two school versus a tier one. But the stats are out there to show that tier two kids get recruited just as much as the tier one kids, at least in our region. Yeah. And I mean, we've had kids who, um, I mean, if you're a receiver, uh, you run a route. I mean, it's pretty evident by two or three plays into the game by your footwork and your, and your speed, whether or not you're, uh, you know, you're going to be a, a, a veritable force and, sure. you know, and then you can establish whether or not they have hands at some point as yeah. well. Um, okay. So to, to play devil's advocate here, because I'm, I'm a little split, but I'm also a very competitive person. So yeah. I, uh, there's a small part of me and, uh, it's mostly influenced from other coaches, uh, and especially some we've been talking to tonight, but you know. There's a there's a part of me that really 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 just wants to be in the show. Yeah. You know, like I just even if it means getting our butt whooped, part of me just wants to say like, you know, have some pride even if we're getting whooped. Like this is how we get better. This is the experience we want. These are the guys that are going to make us better because they're the best players in the league. Um, you know, I want to be I want to be at the highest level of football so I can say to my kids, you know, this is the best. This is what we aspire to be. Uh, you know, this is how we get better by getting beat. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a there's a limit to that. But sure. um, I feel like and I think the argument we're kind of hearing and you could probably give me more anecdotal stuff because you're looking at it now. But I think what we're hearing from a lot of people is that uh, those who are on the side of tier one or playing up are more along the lines of, you know, well, we just want to be in the best possible sport of uh, the best possible level of the sport. Yeah. Um, and, but, I mean, depending on where you are, uh, like tier one is really just probably a couple of teams. So is it okay to have five teams in tier one and you're that fifth team and there's two, three teams that are just thumping the whole league or normally, especially around here, tier two is more competitive. So would you rather play more competitive football where you can get yourself into some games that come down to last minute plays? Like we were in two games this year. Um, they were both against the same team. One was the semifinal game, one was midseason. And it was exciting football. Like came down to the very last play. I mean, we almost made a comeback to win that semifinal game. And I don't feel like that would happen in a tier one schedule where not, you know, numbers aside, getting um, injured aside, they're, the games are boring after the first five minutes when you are when you just know you're going to get thumped. And then at halftime, the other coach is like, oh, I'm going to put my great tones in now. Like, that's not – who's having fun then, right? Yeah. Like, No, so, the best one is when they come and they say, is it, are you okay if we run the clock? Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not okay with that. But <laughs> um, – and then, like, we had a really interesting uh, person come across on our Twitter uh, at BootsyFD said – it depends on if it's a young team that can gain from the experience of the play or and losing, or if it's a vet team, let the boys win. Which is, you know, that's, I mean, that's probably a topic that we could build off of later, but it kind of spurs the idea of, okay, if it's a young team, so save a bunch of like grade 10s, maybe let them develop at that lower level. And then when they're in high school, when they're in grade 12 and they're all seniors and they're, you know, bigger, stronger, let them come up. You know, bring them to the show. Let them see what they've got. You know, but if you're constantly in the in the world of, you know, the revolving door of high school ball, can you really do that, right? When you only have three years with your player? So. Yeah. So if I'm so let me let me ask you this then. If you're a grade twelve player and I say to you, if you were a grade ten player, I'd be like, It's okay, kid, you can play the the bigger, tougher grade twelve guys and get your butt whooped and uh, you know, it's cool because I think that builds your character and makes you better. Uh, but if you're in grade 12, like, I, I don't think you, you know, I, you just deserve to win. I, I want to give you your your cool medal or whatever, uh, uh, you know, for winning tier two. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I again, I, I, the kids that I really appreciate are the kids who would tell me, coach, I want to play those top schools and I want to play those top teams. And that's more important to me than hoisting a trophy with a, you know, with an asterisk. Yeah. See, here's the thing. 
no one's Disney's never going to make a movie for a team that goes 0 and 8. They're always going to make a movie <laughs> for the team that goes out there and wins a championship. End of story. But I, I see where you're coming from, but it's just, it's 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 a tough you know row to hoe when you just know that your grade twelves they might be you might have twelve grade twelves they have thirty yeah. you know those the, the big three those schools in tier one they have a they have way more grade twelves than see you. I got to challenge you on I got to challenge you on that analogy though because Disney doesn't make movies about tier two at all. Well, we don't even mention it. No, no, they don't make. They just don't make movies about tier two. You know, Rudy wasn't trying out for some like JUCO. Yeah, Rudy was. Rudy busted his ass to play for Notre Dame, the yeah. top school, because that's what you aspire to do. But did you not see the Little Giants? Like, come on, man, that's like. No, okay. I actually did not see the Little Giants. But, but who? But who are they playing? Well, I mean, it's my football. No, okay. but it's like the top guys, the top dogs in their league is playing the dumpster fire team, and you know. I mean, it's a Disney movie, so like, yes, that dumpster fire team brings the brings the and they aspire to beat the best team, but that's never gonna happen. Those kids are gonna leave on backboards. Like, we (laughs) should not. Like, I'm sorry. It's we live in a world now where it's you know we gotta build people up. We're building the future leaders of tomorrow. So maybe let them have a couple. Like, I'm not saying easy wins. And like, for all those people who are tier two teams listening right now, I'm not saying that you're a cakewalk because by all means you always give us a hard go. But there is there is a distinct difference, and I just feel like for recruiting, for player retention, for injuries, it's just and for overall morale, I'm gonna stay down because yeah. I'm not saying we're gonna go out there and win a championship every year, but at least out of five years, I might have a chance one or two times where if I'm a tier one five years congratulations you don't get a medal for finishing fifth yeah and and for context we at the high school level ended up in tier two this year um and our friends who we've been talking to tonight were that team that ended up at the uh you know ended up going to tier one and and actually not and doing pretty well considering they were the bottom of tier one yeah but uh they didn't they didn't win anything but they still did well but we you know and we still didn't even win in tier 2 so no. we so we're you know we're not uh we're not hypocritical in a sense that we aren't saying that tier 2 is not a fun place to be because we no. were passionate about those games and we were we were upset when we yeah. lost but um but the you know but had we been in the position where we had a choice between tier 1 and tier 2 I think I don't know that would have been a different scenario I would be in a much, I would probably be more receptive to a tier one, um, you know, go schedule if I knew I wasn't going to lose players to the team up the road or down the lane because they're playing in a tier two and they're winning. I'm losing because I want to be the big mighty man and play tier one. It's easy to stay in tier one when you're not going to lose players, you know. Maybe you're, you know, you're a team that doesn't have a school around, you know, miles around you. You don't have to worry about little Timmy going to play down the road. We as a city school have to worry about that. Yeah. So we don't have the luxury of saying, well, we'll go up to tier one, we'll lose, because we know our kids are coming here. They're not going anywhere else. Yeah. Our kids will just not come. Right? And we've seen it already. And so, we're but for the record, this is another this is a whole other podcast. Yeah. Um, but uh, I you know, we want to be in a place where that can't happen. Exactly. Um, but but also, and I've always said this about all levels of football. Obviously, if you're a professional or even a collegiate player, you don't really have the option of just picking up and taking your ball and going home nope. without it jeopardizing your uh, your season or even your career. But uh, in amateur football, which is what we're all about on this podcast, mm. uh, in a lot of levels, whether it's recreational, senior, men's, women's, uh, even high school in, in some areas, you can just – if things aren't going your way, you can pick up and just go somewhere else. Yeah. And uh, my opinion in general, and this is going off topic just a tiny bit, uh, but I'll, I'll bring it around so you know where I'm, what I'm getting to. My opinion about programs in general is that if you can't keep your people for whatever reason and they're going to other places, uh, and this is a Bobby quote a little bit here, but uh, you know, let them go. If yeah. they don't want to be here, let them go. Yep. Um, but you have to build a culture where people want to play for you. Mm-hmm. And again, this is touching on that topic that we'll probably talk about soon because we're all pissed off about high school stealing players and stuff. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a really big deal for us. But, um, but we also want to build a program where kids want to play for us. And for me, that comes down to the fundamental decisions that uh, affect your team, like 
whether or not, given the choice, you would go to tier one or go to tier two. Your kids have to buy into the reason you're doing those things. Um, and I'll get a reference, our friends um, from uh, the team that in our league that just made tier one this year and went on to actually challenge a tier one team and almost win in the playoffs. Um, they, you know, their kids were all in. Yeah. And you know what? Their kids, they were not granted their regional school. They didn't really have competition to lose players that like you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. That's, they're a, big, kind that's of like, a big thing. I get it. And, uh, but their kids were, their kids were bought in. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, and that's a culture thing for me. You, you yeah. kind of like, you build a, uh, you tell them your opinions or you tell them what the team wants to do and, or you even give them a choice. But, um, I want to coach a team where a, they're going to really respect my decision to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever that decision is. But I also want to coach for a team that wants to win um, and play the big boys. Yeah. And I, you know, and I respect that. And, uh, you know, I remember this when I played, I mean, I, it's been 11, almost 12 years since I played high school football and those schools, one of them is in the big three now, but they, they were not when I was playing. And in the school that we're talking about where our friends coach, they were also on an up-and-coming team. They were building the Tier 2, coming up into Tier 1 or whatever they are now. And it's it's all about culture. You know, it's all about, you know, your coaches, you know, buying in. Coach had to buy in first. And, you know, so that, that culture and that's, you know, that community, right? It's all about community with these players. It takes time to build and foster. So, like, yeah, once you've won a few times and you're winning, you know, consistently – you have that luxury of your kids just buying in. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I seen that my wife, you know, agrees that we should stay up and play tier one. Like, whatever. She's, she's uh, her own person, right? I love it. I love it. Listen, let the record show that Josh's wife, uh, Miranda, God love her, she has just voted that you should stay in tier one. And and shout out to a number of the coaches and, and other people who voted on this poll. I'm, I'm seeing there there's some numbers coming in here. Uh, my boy... My boy, Coach Carlo, uh, who voted for Tier 1. That doesn't surprise me. That dude is a fierce competitor. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, I, I see the votes are coming in. Are we are we trending yeah, sort of 50-50 so still? Or are we kinda... I mean, we're about 50-50. And, I mean, it doesn't really come down to, like, your compete level, though, right? Like, if you can be... You can be someone that's super aggressive and wants to win and, you know, you want to compete in everything you do, but it's it's being realistic and understanding if you're looking at the big picture, like, then yeah, okay, if I want to build this program, I can't just go out there and just like take my match, take some gasoline, light it on. <laughs> you're going to get a nice flame for a bit, but you're never going to heat your house. But if you build a nice foundation, it's going to be warm. Look it's going to take time. The analogies. Listen, I've had like two weeks off from the podcast. I'm just scripting everything I say. <laughs> right? I've got a I cup of it. Joe in me and I'm good to go. I love it. Yeah, we're drinking coffee at 9 o'clock at night here. This is probably not a good idea. Whatever. <laughs> jacked up. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree. I agree that there's, you know, some fundamental concerns with, you know, being reckless. Yeah. Um, but I do I do believe that, uh, and, and, you know, clearly we disagree on this one, but I do believe that uh, a competitive nature includes wanting to beat the best. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know. But, and let, but, here's the, but here's the thing, right? A lot of leagues, and, like, I'd love to start hearing from some people from Western Canada on uh, maybe on social media. Um a lot of leagues, there's crossovers, right? So for us, we have to play a couple tier one teams in the year. So that's a great thermometer for you to see where you're at. Are you, you know, able to compete with those guys? And then maybe you can go up the next year or a year later and now play tier one. You can kind of yeah. test the water before you jump in, right? I think that's a that's a great idea, you know? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just checking out the polls here. Yeah. Listen, man, I don't think we're 50-50 anymore. Um, Instagram's looking about, you know, 70-30. Facebook is looking about 70-30. Uh, you know what? The, the Listen, trend is now playing up. I'm just I'm well, just going to put that out. No, I kind of wish know. this was a live show. Uh, those of you who are listening are going to be listening. This is pre-recorded. So those of you who know we're recording right now because you're voting – um, you're, you're going to have to, you're going to hear this now and it may have completely shifted before it gets to you. But I, the way we're trending at this point is about 70, 30 towards the tier one play up opinion. And, uh, and so I don't know, 
I don't know, unless uh, unless Twitter's saying something different. I didn't check Twitter yet. Twitter's still, I mean, it's about 50-50. Okay, so we've established that Twitter people are pussies. Yeah. And Facebook and Instagram people are, are fierce competitors. So while I have a second here, let's just talk about uh, what the reason we do this. Um, and, and that is uh, to, to, you know, be part of a great football community. And part of that community is obviously um, our sponsor, uh, which is CanadaFootballChat.com. Uh, please, I would encourage you to become a CFC Insider today. If you register for your membership, uh, exclusive CFC Insider membership, you can get access to rankings, analysis, daily football, recruiting news. Uh, this is all across Canada. And this is the time of year where we are seeing all of the signing days and all of the announcements. Um, and we're even getting into junior camps now at university. So this is a great time to be a CFC Insider because the content is next level good. I'm like super pumped this time of year. This is my NFL draft. I get to see kids that uh, that I've been watching from a young age, uh, t- you know, who are, you know, ranked at grade nine and grade 10. And I'm like, ah, how are they going to do in three years when everyone else grows up? But you know what? It's This is the best time of year because we get to see these guys who we've been watching for a couple of years now uh, go to the next level. So please uh, go to... CanadaFootballChat.com and sign up for your CFC Insider membership today. Yeah. Now, Josh, tell me about the numbers. The numbers, it's, you know, it's it's higher tier one. Yes. You know, people out there, people aren't realistic. You know, that's what this is coming <laughs> down to. People want to live in a world of lies, right? Like, face with the decision. I put the paper down in front of you and I say, Sean, here's the pen you need to sign up for your for your year. You know, you and you face all the facts. Your your you know your decision might change, but that being said, it's not a landslide. By no means is it a landslide right now. Um, I want to I want to add to that though, because um, you you talk about like call to action, like actually sign sign on the dotted line, get this done. To to clarify, I have a preference. I prefer to play tier one. I want to play up, and I want to I want to play the big boys. Okay. However. That may or may not be the decision I make on behalf of my team. Huh? I would go strictly situational in that situation. But that's I would, kind of what I've been arguing. Nah, ah. see, I, I no. My argument is, would you rather? Okay. And that's that's the poll. We're asking, would you rather? Yeah. And I could make an argument for all night about why I would prefer to be playing the big boys. Mm-hmm. However, if I'm like to go to your point, and the reason I partially agree and why I'm 50-50 in some ways is. Um, situational analysis when this comes up is, you know, how many guys do I have left on my roster? Mm-hmm. Like your, uh, uh, what's his name, Bootsy? Yeah. Bootsy on Twitter said, you know, hey, if you got a young team and they're just, you know, getting beat up is going to, you know, help them get better, um, then great. But if you have a young team who's shaky and maybe on the verge of quitting, then maybe not, you know, a good idea. Or, you know, or better still, put it to a vote. If I have a bunch of senior players... Grade 12 guys, I want to say, hey, grade 12 guys, you know what? This is your last year. This is what we're looking at. We can take a legit run. Yeah. Or we could we could stay and play with the base. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you may or may not get a chance to, you know, to hoist a, a, a banner. Um, but it'll be a tier two banner. Yeah. Or you can have the choice to, you know, to, to be uh, in the top tier and play the best teams and, you know, let the – let things happen how they happen. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, I don't know that I would always give it to the kids to decide, but I definitely would get some input from yeah. them. And, you know, like, I think that it's an important decision that the coaches all, like, the whole staff needs to be on board for first. And then, like you said, bring your kids in. Bring your 11s and your 12s, you know, your soon-to-be 11s, your soon-to-be 12s, and let them kind of weigh the pros and cons. But one thing that would need to be expressed to these kids is that you have to do what's going to be best for your football career. <laughs> Not what's best for 2019, 2020. What's good for you in 2021, 2022, and 2023 when you want to play in you know, Canadian university sports or if you're gifted enough down below the border, right? If getting injured because you want to play a tier one team that is known for taking cheap shots at you, is going to get you injured, then maybe that's a decision uh, you want to go. No, and I'm going to say it because, like, we've been there and we know that some teams and, like, just some 
We'll take cheap shots, and they're up there. The teams who play Tier 2 in our region, it's good football. And it's not like it's not like we're out there watching Timbits. It's like it's not like it's my football with a bunch of bobbleheads. Like this is tough football. Like yeah. some teams, some of our better teams couldn't compete against some of these kids. Uh, but I don't know, man. Like I this is strictly from my own personal experience. Yeah. Um and you're I was, a little bit more longer in the tooth than I am, Sean. Yes. So I mean you've been around. No, no, and I mean I'm talking about strictly from a player perspective. No, for like sure. when I when I played football, I got better by Honestly, and this is harsh to say, but I got, you know, I got beat up a lot. Yeah. And there was a time where, um, you know, a couple of friends and I got to play down on the, uh, you know, the American side of the border. Um, and in that league, you, you know, it was a, it was a senior league or a semi-pro league. And you, yeah. you had guys who, um, kind of like here in Canada, you had guys who were, you know, a, a fireman during the day or a teacher during the day and coming to football practice at night. And, you know, and they were high school stars who were still in great shape and they were coming to play. Yep. Um, but the next week, I could line up on the line of scrimmage and the D-tackle in front of me is a guy who just got cut from Lord knows what camp. Yeah. And I'm talking like serious studs. And I, you know what, like I got so much better yeah. when having to face off against the best people I've ever faced off against. Yeah. And even playing in Ontario, we'd go up north and some of these D-linemen would just literally pummel me yeah um and when i'd go back and and i'd have the luxury of getting my hands on a d lineman who was you know not as strong and not as fast like i i realized how much better getting my ass kicked uh made me yep and you know like and that's definitely something you see in all facets of life hardship will make you stronger right but and here's a question for you sean are you willing to get better with experience but sacrifice future numbers and that's what this really comes down to we're looking at it from a coach's perspective we're looking at this from a program's perspective are you willing to allow your boys who are in grade 12 11 to get better they're going to get better but the argument can be made they can get better with year two and sacrifice your future numbers the, the kids who are coming up who are seeing your team go oh and eight one and seven get thumped get thumped get thumped Yes, your kids are tough, they're meaty, they're greedy, but now your kids are, woo, they're disappearing. Are you willing to do that? Right? And, and again, you know what? And it's a situational. Kind of situational thing. Yeah. You know, it's just, it, that's just where I'm coming from where I just want to build the program up and then I'll cross that bridge in a few years when we get there. Mm-hmm. Maybe once we can prove that our pipeline is strong, our kids are coming, we'll have the discussion to go up to that level. I mean, I'm not the head coach, it's not up to me. But if it was, I, yeah. know, where my, I know where I sit, right? Yeah, no, see, I just, um, I feel like there's 50-50 with that. And again, I'd have to be a situational sort of decision kind of guy. But there definitely is um, a benefit. And again, just playing, like these kids you're talking about that are seeing uh, the future, you know, their future by looking at their high school team get beat, um, you know, all season. But then seeing several players go on to play at the university level because they got to play at the highest level. Right. Um, you know, just, it, it's, you know, it's, it's six it's, of one, half dozen of the other point, in some cases. Right? But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of discussion here and I kind of, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always um, happy to hear uh, discussion on this and we may even have to have a follow up because just based on the people who are sending me direct messages about this, I, I feel like we may be able to, have a whole other podcast with maybe maybe we'll have a phone in. Well, we might have to do a live, actual live recording with <laughs> yeah. a phone in session. A phone in session where yeah. people can call in with their opinions because this is definitely it's getting heated. <laughs> and, and I'm, pretty, I'm afraid I'm, you know I'm kind of nervous to start showing my face around the other team that coach with all those other coaches, but we, uh, it is what it is, and you know I'm going to stick with what I've said, and you know I believe in it, but proves in the pudding. Yeah. And I think and I think one thing we can agree on, though, is that um, ego aside, yeah. I think you always have to at least weigh what is best for your kids. Always. And, you know, and it may not always be that you, your decision may not always be based on what's best for your kids yeah. um, or best for your program. There may be a combination of things. But I think if as long as you're taking into consideration what is best for the group of players you have on the field. Yeah. And, yeah, you can look at the future of the program. But uh, that's a whole – that's a more holistic culture-building exercise yeah. that I think comes down to more than just are you tier one or tier two. Yeah. Uh, it's building a, it's bu- building a culture. But – 
um, as long as my like my I, my parting shot for you will be as long as you're taking into account what's best for your people yeah. and not just your own ego. Yeah, um, I think you're doing the right thing. And it comes down to just because you're a tier two team. Like I honestly think, and I'll give our coaching staff a pat on the back. We have some of the best coaches around on our team, and we're a tier two team. So you're going to get good coaching even at the tier two level. But, you know, I agree with you. It's what's best for the athlete, what's best for the kid, what's best for their safety. And as long as they're having fun playing football and then CFC gets to, you know, showcase them for us, you know, and all the other schools around, I'm happy. Because as long as people or kids are involved in football and the sport keeps going, I'm good. Yeah. But I'm still going to say that it's here too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, listen, everybody wants to play wherever – uh, they want to play. Mm-hmm. As long as they're playing, I'm happy. And yep. as long as uh, everyone is taking into account what's best for the kids and the safest way for them to become better football players. Yeah, I'll buy that. Perfect. Okay, so um, I think we'll have to come back to this. Uh, there's definitely some opportunity for us to discuss this further. My suggestion is if you have an opinion about this, poll or no poll on our social media, I suggest that you reach out to us um, at, uh, at any of our social media accounts we're on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram um please reach out let us know what you think because this is a topic that we love to talk about and we will probably continue to talk about because it continues to uh be a a, a, an argument point for us and coaches really do love to argue we have a good time with that on the sidelines so i'm just going to give you before we sign off uh, I'll give you a quick preliminary numbers for uh, the, the polls. <laughs> yeah. And then see. next podcast, we'll update them for the peanut gallery. So on our Facebook page, Between the Whistles, it's 71% Tier 1 play up, 29% Tier 2 play down. Yes. And on um, Instagram, it is 67% play up, 33% play down. Let's see what these numbers are, you know, come the next episode. Um I'm okay with losing. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your your wife's making you take the L on this one. It is what it is. <laughs> not the first time. <laughs> Perfect. So as we said, uh, please, even if it's not on this topic, if you'd love to chat with us, we'd love to hear from you, coaches, uh, players, fans, uh, anyone who loves to talk football. Please reach out to us uh, at uh, Between the Whistles on any of our um, social media accounts, and please um, register and listen to this podcast anywhere that you can find. Uh, podcasts on uh, on Spreaker, on uh, iTunes, on Spotify, anywhere at all that you can listen to podcasts, I guarantee you'll find us. And more importantly, on CanadaFootballChat.com, you'll find us. Thanks again for listening today, and uh, we hope to hear from you more, and uh, we hope to continue to hear that you're listening to us. Thanks again. Deuces! God. <laughs>